Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and today we're going to look at scatter plots. Scatter plots or scatter charts use dots to represent the values for two different numeric variables, generally designated as variable X and Y. So what we see often is that the variable on the horizontal axis is denoted as an independent variable, variable X. The variable on the vertical axis is the dependent variable represented by Y. So the dots in a scatter plot report not only the values of these pairs of data, but also patterns or relationships between the two numeric variables. When we're describing the relationship between variables, there are many ways that we can describe that relationship. They can be positive, negative, we can look at them as strong, weak, linear, nonlinear. So when we're talking about a strong positive correlation, we're talking about this rise in a fairly um, clustered um, group. When we look at this more moderate correlation, you're going to see it's moderate because we have more distance between our observations and that trend line. When we get this kind of scatter pattern, looks kind of like a shotgun, we'll say that there's no correlation between the two variables. When we have a variable, pair of variables that are in going in this direction, right, we consider that to be a negative correlation. And at some point in your statistics career, you may come up on these curvilinear relationships. When we use the scatter plot to look at some kind of predictive or correlational relationship between the variables, what we add to the plot is this trend line. And what this trend line is, it's simply the mathematical equation that shows the best fit to the data. So although we may use that trend line to provide an additional signal in terms of how strong the relationship between the two variables are, um, it also allows us to identify potentially unusual points or outliers that may be affecting our computation of that trend line. All that being said, it's important to remember that simply because we observe a relationship between the two variables X and Y in this scatter plot, what it does not mean is that the changes in one variable are necessarily responsible for the changes in the other. This is why you'll hear statisticians say all the time that correlation does not imply causation. And what that means is that there may be some other confounding variable or set of other variables that is actually creating the relationship. For example, high blood pressure. We could plot um, fat intake and high blood pressure, and that might look to be very correlated. However, there are other factors at play, age, genetics, weight. So simply because that relationship exists in the scatter plot, it does not mean that there is causation. In other words, the change in one variable is not completely responsible for the changes in the other. Let me give you an example of that. So here we have a plot of per capita cheese consumption and the number of people who die by becoming tangled in their bed sheets. And what we can see is they move together. As cheese consumption increases, the number of people who die by getting tangled in their bed sheet also rises. Nobody would say, wow, eat less cheese and fewer people will die by being tangled in their bed sheets. This is just an example of what we refer to as a spurious correlation. In other words, the two variables appear to have a relationship, but when you actually look at the data, you realize that that's not actually the fact. If you're fascinated by spurious correlations, please visit Tyler Viggins' website, and he has a host of them for you. So now we've talked about them, let's actually create one. So what I have here is I have a set of 40 observations, and it's the number of classes that a student misses in a semester and their GPA. And we're going to go ahead and plot these two variables. So in order to, order to do that, 
we're going to take and we're going to highlight all of our observations and then we're using the insert menu we're going to select this scatter plot you'll see insert scatter XY and so I'm going to select scatter plot and what you're going to see is that it appears that the more classes you miss the lower your GPA if you want to add a trend line then we can simply hit plus for chart elements you'll get this little menu over here and you'll see one of your choices right here is trend line so now we have the best fit trend line um, and we can probably call this a moderate relationship because you'll see there are a fair number of data points that fall far from this best fit line so simply using the insert scatter plot function in Excel will create one of these charts for you as always I hope that you found this video useful and I thank you so much for watching